right? Requires permission from God to talk. Say a true prophet requires permission from God to talk. So even for me to make a terrible call to you, God must permit me. Even that's why in the morning, on Sunday morning, sometimes I don't want to talk. I don't want to even talk. I don't even want to greet you. Because I'm not controlling myself. The Holy Spirit just said, don't enter there. Do you remember what happened when Jesus rose from the dead? When they were excited that Jesus had come, and Jesus said, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended to my word, to my Father. Turn to your name and say, neighbor, where are you at? What kind of judgment have you been passing? Hallelujah. Let us open the Bible to the book of First Kings, the Second Kings, brother. I am going to preach today. If you open your Second Kings chapter 6, if you open your heart, you will receive from God. But you have to open your heart. Second Kings chapter 6. We'll take our reading from verse 8. Once when the king of Syria was warring against Israel, he took counsel with his servant, saying, In such in such a place shall be my king. But the man of God sent away to the king of Israel, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are going down there. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him. Thus he used to warn him, so that he saved himself there more than once or twice. And the wind and the mind of the king of, of Syria was greatly troubled because this thing, because of this thing, and he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me who of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet, who is in Israel. He tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing the word of God? Amen. Yeah. The word is very clear. The king of Syria was troubled because each time he made a strategy, God revealed the strategy to the man of God. And the prophet Elijah would warn the king of Israel. In obedience to the voice of God, the king of Israel kept on standing, stepping the trap that was being set for him. And it passed out his enemies. And they said, ah, What's happening? It looks like when we set an ambush here, you don't pass through here. If we set an ambush here, you go the other way. What's happening? Is there a sail out among us? Turn to your neighbor and say, some of the pointing of fingers we do in the church is our lack of understanding the prophetic ministry. Here we see Elijah being given, Elijah rather being given the divine ability to hear what the king of Syria was planned in his own meeting. He sits in his boardroom. Elijah is not there, but the God of Elijah is there. Then John Rebbe say, the prophet okay. need not to be physically there, because his God 
He has the ability to be everywhere, every time. And then the God of the prophet will tell him what to do. So, did somebody go and tell Pastor Tom this? How come he's talking about this? Who told him? You start accusing each other. If you really want to accuse, accuse you. Turn to him and say, if you want to make an accurate accusation, ask God, why did you expose me? Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Righteous judgment comes from the Spirit of God. Righteous judgment is an anger of safety in time of trouble. Righteous judgment is like a channel of blessing to those who obey the voice of God. But how many in today's church are willing to obey God's voice? Ask your neighbor and say, how many times were you given words and you ignored it? Just an obsession. Give you as an example. When I met you for the first time, what did I say to you? You said God brought me to Hamilton for a purpose. And I told you that God wanted to be Hamilton. You did. Did I tell you that? You did. That is when you came. How long have you been here? It's almost a year now. Almost a year now. Okay. Then when you came in my office now, what did you tell me you wanted to go? Where did you want to go now? I said, I want to move to Abel. Talk, talk now, I want to talk. move to Alberta. You want to move to Alberta. Okay. So what did the voice of God say to you? No, I should move. Huh? I shouldn't move. So why are you going to Alberta? Why do you even consider yourself that you want to go to Alberta? When the voice says Hamilton is the place of your refuge and God you here, that's where you must station yourself. Can you talk to us what was happening? I'm just using this as an example. There are many people who have given away here. I thought moving to Alberta for greener pastures because here I couldn't find a job. Greener pastures? Yes. Who's greener pastures? <laughs> I'm hearing from people that... Uh, you are hearing from, are, Okay. Can you speak louder? You are hearing from... I'm what? hearing from people that they are doing well in Alberta. Turn to your neighbor and say, man's opinion is not God's opinion. When, when you place yourself outside God's will, you got trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I told you, mommy, God wants you to be here. And I gave you an instruction. Mommy, Enroll yourself into a what? To school, which I didn't do. That's what I gave you. That is the gist of what I said to you. But now, instead of following the voice of God, you are now following the voice of what? Of man. What is controlling you? What you hear. Your ears become a problem. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, Man's ears. <laughs> is a problem. That is the greatest problem. Man's ears. The ears. These two ears here. Do you see any door? I'm talking, do you see any door? Turn to them and say, man's ears are a door for Satan. Very simple. Your God are better. Just sit on my daughter. Sit over here. Maybe I may use you again as an example. I don't know. I'm just using you as an example. I, I received a telephone call from one lady from our better. And she told me, Pastor, I came here. I'm just working. I'm working. Uh, I'm working. And I'm just working. And I'm working to pay rent. I can't send money to my relatives. 
I can't do no nothing. Uh, it looks like since I came here, I moved from Toronto to Alberta. It, it looks everything is just stagnant. I have two jobs, but there's no blessing in the what? In the two jobs. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't confuse yourself. Because you like to gossip and hear from people. For a long time, man have been controlled by their what? Their ears. What they hear. We have a group of uh, <coughs> East European people called the Gyps people. The Gyps people, this is what they do. Their ears are very sensitive. When one says, ah, there is a church in Hamilton where everybody is receiving miracle, all of them will just come and you see the church even on top. True. Where are they coming from? Tomorrow, the year again, there is another church giving, uh, giving blankets. Everyone go there. Tomorrow there's another church in um, in uh, in Alberta. They go. Hamilton, they go. They are never stable. As a result, tell your neighbor and say the life you are living is the only life you have. You do not have a spare life. How you live this life, life? determines who you will be. Do you think you can buy a house while you are doing that? Mm -hmm. huh? Do you think that you can get an investment and get promoted in a job? No. No. Oh, I heard, I heard, I heard. Why can't you pray? Tell your neighbor and say, why do you have to hear? Why can't you pray? And find God's will for your life. The prophet of God carefully guides people in places where they find refuge, in places where they find safety, in places where they find success. That's what prophets are called to be. Turn to your neighbor and say, prophets are given the ability to see beyond the natural. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yeah. Is there anybody who is talking again with another person from Alberta? Wave my hand. There are some people who are talking to a person from Alberta. You want to go to Alberta? That's foolishness if you decide to go. I can assure you, that's foolishness. Pure foolishness. You go there, you will have trouble and trouble and trouble. Your life will suffer. And sometimes we caught even death. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, some of us, some of us. we came to Canada. Saying Canada is a green pasture. Uh -huh. And Canada has become dry pasture. <laughs> How come now? You came to Canada and you say, I need green pasture. And Canada has become dry pasture. You come, oh, we will come. You heard your people were in Toronto. You went to Toronto. Now Toronto become dry pasture. You heard the people were in Calgary, you went to Calgary, Calgary become dry pass. You are being guided by the voice of man. Turn to them and say, you are being guided by the voice of man. You are being tempted by your emotions. Man's outward desire for success. Let me tell you, if you go to Alberta and you have two jobs and you work with a man in the bank, you don't have a husband, do you, can you call yourself your son? You, you can have a life like that one. And you go there, you are fornicating every day. You are outside the will of God. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to them and say, man's desire, man's desire for outward show is a temptation to sin and disobey God. We like things that look good. When we Job, when we hear Job, the devil will magnify the word Job, Job as if you are being, as if you are working. As if you are getting job without even doing nothing. Job. We are making money here and I'm better. How come they don't have house here and I'm better? How come they are like, how come they are like slaves there? They work, they are only going to job tomorrow out in, they don't have time to each other. How come? Is that kind of a life you want to live? Is that kind of life you want to live? A life where you are breaking your bed and killing yourself before your time? Is that the life God wants you to do? But the Bible makes it very clear. But first seek ye the kingdom of what? Of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Tell to your neighbor and say, I'm here, I'm here. by divine appointments. I'm here. By divine, by divine instruction. I'm here, I'm here. By, divine by divine appointment. Unless God moves, I will not move. Unless God directs, I will not move. That is who I am. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> a place where God has not appointed you can become a wilderness. A decision which you make and God has not said it can become like a prison. Tell to them and say, decisions not ordained by God are like prisons. Many of you don't like you are saying, how come? How did you know? I'm just talking. Tell to your neighbor and say, Man's Man. desire, desire for materialism, materialism. Is, a big temptation. is a big temptation. No, are they telling you there's God? What are they telling you? Can you see that? Okay. In the midst of all they are saying, are they, did they ever mention the name God? No. Can you talk about that? No, they have never mentioned God. They have never mentioned what? God. God. Oh, they have, met, they have mentioned Job. Job. They have mentioned uh, 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 man. man. They have mentioned life. But did they mention God? No. So if God's name is, in, is not in it, whose name is it? Satan. Satan. <laughs> because your mission is not to glorify God. Your mission is to glorify God. Yourself and your master, set it. That's why you are not talking about God. Come, it's Job. It's not come, we have found God here. It's come, we have found Job here. Come, we have found nice life here. Far come, we have, but it's not God. Turn to your neighbor and say, Be careful, Be careful. How, you how you begin. If you start something, God will never get involved in something he did not start. Turn to him and say, be careful how you begin. Because God will never get involved in what he did not start. It's yours. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Tell your neighbor and say, no matter, no matter. how outward, how outward. Beautiful. beautiful the idea, yeah. no matter yeah. how seducing yeah. the atmosphere, yeah. when God yeah. is not in it, not in it's it. not his, not his. He, will not come. he will not come. That is the trouble we have. We are trying to go to ask God to ratify our decision. 
In legal terms, we call it ratification. What is ratification? Ratification is when you make your decision and you go back after you make your decision and you say, please can you authorize what I have done? Huh? You make the decision first, after that, you ratify. You go back and say, please can you authorize what I have done? God has not proven that. Tell the Lord and say, that's man's idea. <laughs> That's man's idea, but God's idea is that every step you make, you must make it before you make it. I mean, God's idea is that every step you make, He must make it before you make it. Before you make it. I don't know whether you are hearing me. Are you hearing me? I say God's idea is that every step you make, He must make it before you make it. I mean, God's idea is that decision, that step you are making, He must Himself what? Make it before you make it. Prophets, they are careful that every step they make, God must make the step before they make it. In other words, you are only following in the footsteps of God. In other words, you are only what? Following in the footsteps of God. God make the step and then I make the step. God make the step, then I make the step. God make the step, then I make the step. Which means consistently, my footsteps are in God's footsteps. My footsteps are in God's footsteps. My footsteps are in God's footsteps. Turn to your neighbor and say, it is the nature of God. Never to allow his creation to lead you. Turn to the and say, It is the nature of God never to allow His creation to meet Him. It is God's idea and God's nature that He will never allow you to make a step. He can never follow in your footstep. God can never do it. Turn to the and say, Examine the trouble. You have today. His source, source is that you made a step before God made a step. Tell the Lord, I said, examine the source of your trouble. In most cases, you made a step before God made a step. You know, maybe it was the right decision. But it was not the right time. Mm. Maybe you were doing the right what decision, but the timing was not God's timing. <laughs> it was your timing. Mm. Hallelujah! Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Turn to your neighbor and say, "Just because, Just because it's the right decision, the right decision does not mean it's the right time." God has specific events and specific times. He has carefully planned out for things to happen. I mean, God knew from the beginning that Joseph will be put in a pit. He knew from the beginning that Joseph will be in a pit. Joseph will be sold into slavery. Joseph will be in Potiphar's house. He will be accused of adultery and rape. Joseph will enter into prison before he became prime minister. All these steps were meant to prepare Joseph for the ultimate position God had prepared him. So if Joseph came 
by coup d'etat and made himself the president of Egypt. It was God's way, but not God's timing. It was God's way, but not God's timing. Turn to them and say, wisdom consists of knowing God's will and knowing God's timing. Wisdom consists of knowing God's will and knowing his timing for everything. It might be God's time for you to get married this year. It must be his will for you to get married this year. But he knows you are going to get married in what? In, in September. He knows it's in November. He knows in December. He knows the time. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, neighbor, neighbor, why do you seem to be worried? Do you live in the burial? Tell the Lord and say, neighbor, why are you worried? Tell the Lord and say, neighbor, what is the source of your worry? You are worried. Because you knew in the beginning you did not involve God. The best way, tell to another, I said, if you have done something, and you never involve God, destroy it. Tell to another, I said, if you have done something, and you know it's not God, destroy it and ask Him for a new beginning. I remember one person. He started a church here in Hamilton. He was very, very much so on fire. God told me to start a church. I said, okay. He started the church seven months down the line. I'm sleeping in my house, and a vision come to me. And I see trouble in his church. And I say, now let's close the church. It's too hard now. Let's close the church. I said, no. So I come to a service. After my service, I'm in my office. My cell phone rang. Pastor, can I come and see you? I said, yeah, Pastor, I've come to you now. I want to tell you that uh, uh, I prayed with my wife. We are closing down that church. What happened to say? Now, uh, nothing is working. And you know, sometimes when you, when you look at your brother and he's in a difficult situation, you can't be hard to just... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if life looked like that. I'm sorry. And he said, come and take all the chairs. Come and take everything. And he ended into debt by, by, putting, by hiring and renting the place and they trying to renovate it and then put the money there. And down the line, he stopped. Which means you did not begin with God. Turn to your neighbor and say, avoid, avoid. the losses yes. in life by paying attention yes. to the voice of God. Yes. Say, avoid, avoid the losses, the, losses. the embarrassment, the embarrassment. By, paying by paying attention to the voice of God. Voice of God. Yes. When we make our judgment, Based on outward appearance, we make a mistake. Let us listen to what God said to the prophet Samuel. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16. Am I helping someone this morning? Amen. Am I helping someone? Am I talking to someone? Amen. If you I am talking to you, wave your hand and you say you are talking to me. Amen. Say you are talking to me. Say, prophet, you are preaching to me. Prophet, you, are preaching to me. you are talking about me. Talking about me. I, am I am the one who have to destroy I something I have made so that I can have a new beginning. 
You're watching the live service from Christ's Voice of Restoration Ministry. Please stay tuned.